All right, what's happening? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we got a lot to talk about today. Everything that's gone down since the last time I put out a video. Chase Young is working out with Von Miller. I think that's really big. Also, coaches are raving about Jamin Davis to keep talking about him. And then I have a lot of random news to update y'all on as far as like Anthony Barr. If we end up wanting to sign him, when that would possibly happen. Also, a lot of different stats, rankings, lists, all kinds of stuff, man. I'm going to update y'all on everything that's gone down in the past week. And before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notified notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one without further ado man let's go ahead and get to it let's get it all right so Commander's defensive end edge rusher Chase Young is working out with Von Miller. Now, granted, Chase Young is not ready to play. So, of course, he's not able to go 100%. And I really wish he could. But the fact that he's around Von Miller helps a lot. Because Von Miller is a freak athlete in his own right. But the main reason I want Chase Young around him is a lot of the nuanced stuff. A lot of the mental things, hands, attack plans, counters, all of that type of stuff. So, Chase Young, soak up everything you can get from Von Miller. And hopefully when you're fully healthy, I guess maybe going into the next offseason, you can work out with them while fully healthy because I think that matters a lot. Uh, granted, again, him being around Von Miller, just soaking up everything that he can helps a lot. And in the video, you even see them like doing some stuff. But again, Chase Young is not even healthy enough to play in a regular season game. So, of course, he's not going full throttle right now. So I really want him to be able to do that while learning from Von Miller. I feel like that would just make being around Von Miller that much more beneficial. But hey i'll take what we can get right now man and chase young i mean after that disappointing season last year i know he got hurt but he was disappointing before he got hurt the only thing the injury did is affect how healthy he's been going into this offseason but that injury that he sustained in the last third of the season was not why he was already having a disappointing season next up the washington coaching staff has seen a major improvement in jamin davis and i've just been seeing reports from ron rivera jack del rio multiple coaches and sources all saying that jamin davis is having a very good rise he's improving he's developing he looks more confident he even talked about it he said he feels more confident he said quote way more confident way way more confident and cole holcomb even spoke about him saying quote he's taking a lot of big steps from last year definitely got a better grasp on the defense playing outside i feel like it's pretty natural for him he's taking the right steps on what he needs to do unquote so jamin davis we're not sure if he lo finally looks like like that first round pick that we took him with we're not sure if he looks worthy of that yet but whatever we got from him last year he's already looking way better than that from multiple sources again coming from players coaches and media members so Jamin Davis again not sure if he looks like first round pick yet but he definitely looks like somebody that should be out there for a lot of snaps even though we're technically a 4-3 base defense we're in nickel the majority of the time and I'm hoping that Jamin Davis is good enough to be out there as much as Cole Holcomb is or at least close to it rather than us benching him for David Mayo late into the season and it sounds like he's already past that point we should see a lot of Jamin Davis going into this regular season and I'm excited man because you don't want to waste the first round pick uh, again I'm not sure if he'll ever live up to that first round pick but it sounds like at least he won't be necessarily a bust moving forward hopefully next up Ben Standig from the Athletic he brought up a point that nobody mentions Troy Apke he says reporters this offseason cycle didn't ask for Vera Jack Dario or other players a single direct question about the 2018 fourth round pick with no disrespect to Apke you might be asking why would we the safety turn cornerback who is back at safety stays on the roster because of his special teams work Apke played zero defensive snaps last year teams need players to chase down kicks and block on punts and yet Apke at times during OTAs and minicamp play with the first team defense weird any chance he improved enough to warrant such work no again that's from ben standig on the athletic and I, like i've said i think our coaching staff and i'm pretty sure a lot of coaching staff do this they throw guys out there who are deep on the depth chart and throw them out there with the first team defense or offense to see what they're truly made of because i mean at the end of the day if you're on the roster if there's an injury or whatever happens we're expecting you to play in regular season games we're not expecting you just to literally warm the bench and that's it like if there's a chance that something can happen to where a situation comes up you gotta play 
we need you to be able to hang with the guys. So we need to see what you do against the first teams and against the first teams with the first teams and things like that. So I don't read into Trey Apke is out there with the first teams or any other random guy that's out there with the first teams and too much because a lot of the times it's just them seeing if they can hang and usually they can't. And like Ben Standig, when he said any chance he's improved enough to warrant such work and then he said no. So Trey Apke doesn't necessarily look good out there. It doesn't look like he deserves to be with the first teams, but they're just giving him another chance, another look in the offseason to see if he's improved to be able to hang with the first teams and maybe even contribute on defense instead of just special teams. Apparently he can't. But also, one of the main reasons I wanted to bring this up was that Ben Standig also continued and said, that he asked Rivera after the final minicamp practice who outside of the obvious four secondary starters stood out to him this offseason. The coach started with St. Juice and then he landed on perpetually roster bubble safety Jeremy Reeves and nickel corner Danny Johnson. So he praised those guys but then he also went on to praise Percy Butler and said that he flashed his terrific skill set which has me really excited because now Percy Butler now he didn't use the word consistent but he said the word flash and that's what we know we get from percy butler when we draft him he's a high ceiling guy that if we could just get consistent he can be a high quality player but as of right now he's flashing that still has me optimistic about his future but that doesn't necessarily say yet that he's ready to start in regular season games at all he also said that christian holmes is a physical corner and of course also Derek force has been receiving praise from all the defensive coaches the past couple of weeks Derek force has been balling out as well moving on an update just announcing this in case you may not know the washington commanders will report the training camp july 26th and the rookies also report that day and of course it will be in ashburn virginia it will not be in richmond and we are one of 10 teams who have their rookies reporting the same day that they start training camps so again we start training camp on the 26th and our rookies also report the 26th a lot of most other teams have their rookies come in like a day or two before ben standig also in another part of the same article said boy did we go overboard on the buffalo nickel talk even the coaches are telling everyone to relax he wrote how chris harris said quote it's not as big as people are making it out to be it's just the traditional nickel position with a little more size unquote and Ben Stan did goes on to say we knew that but the emphasis on this role over the past two seasons seemingly shifted the Buffalo nickel into the pole position among the different options for how to use the 11th defender and I'm telling y'all that just to basically say we are kind of blowing this Buffalo nickel thing out of proportion I mean granted right now without pads and without guys having to step up and be physical in the run game, Benjamin St. Juice looks like the ideal candidate for the Buffalo nickel. He can cover tight ends. He's the only cornerback really on roster right now that can even keep up with Jahan Dotson so he can stick with the smaller, shifty receivers as well. So as of right now, like honestly, he looks like our leading candidate for the Buffalo nickel. But then of course you also have Cameron Crow that can step in at times and handle that role even though I love him in strong safety. He dominated his strong safety. Keep him there. That's where he makes plays. Of course you may want to bring Landon Collins back. Derek Forrest has been balling. Ron Rivera talked about Percy Butler possibly filling in that role even though I prefer him as more of like a single high free safety type of guy to basically take over what Bobby McCain is doing. Being our post safety, the guy that's furthest back on the defense. But I mean either way we have a lot of options there and at the end of the day again like chris harris was talking about and like several commanders coaches have basically talked about the past couple of weeks that the buffalo nickel position isn't as necessary and as vital as us fans make it out to be also an update on special teams ben standig went on to also say the result of the returner competition could open a roster spot washington dabbled with the punt game during practices using rookie wideout john dotson dax milne alex erickson who was literally brought in here to be just a pure punt returner that's basically what he's here to be if we can get him to do anything on offense that's just a bonus and then undrafted receivers jaquez ezard who i'm rooting for and kyrick mcgowan those are all of the guys who have filled in punt so far no jared patterson nobody else no danny johnson and also of course like ben standig pointed out as well dotson is the only roster lock out of all of those players that i just named the others could snag a sixth wide out slot behind mclaurin curtis samuel john dotson diami brown and cam sims so whoever steps up and is looking like something in the return game and maybe you kind of look like something on the offensive side of the ball as well that's who's going to be the one that snags that sixth 
maybe we hold seven receivers but i think six is more realistic so those are your five again dotson mclaurin samuel deami brown and cam sims who's going to be the sixth behind them it's more than likely going to be the guy who's the best returner or maybe we will end up holding seven we'll see and then of course mark and michelle has been making a name for himself in practices so don't be sleep on the fact that he may be that guy that snatches that spot he may snatch it he may force them to hold seven or at least make the practice squad and of course no talk about commanders would be complete without at least somewhat of an update on curtis samuel ben standig says good news on the injury front washington appears to have avoided any new issues assuming sitting curtis samuel for four to five sessions was purely out of an abundance of caution as rivera said so it's just more people reaffirming that we sat curtis samuel through some practices just out of an abundance of caution and nothing has happened so he's good to go we shouldn't have to worry but who knows because they kept toying with us and, and playing with our emotions last year acting like he wasn't hurt and they just kept delaying and delaying it to the point that he barely even played last season so i'm not sure about giving them the benefit of the doubt right now but we'll see next up let's start to get to some of these lists and rankings and random stats CBS came out and ranked the best backup NFL QBs of 2022. They had Jimmy Garoppolo as number one, Baker Mayfield number two. Even though I would definitely have Baker Mayfield over Jimmy G, I'm not gonna lie. Teddy, number three, Nick Foles, number four, Garner Minshew, number five, and Taylor Heineke is number six. Then behind him, Case Keenum at seven, Jacoby Brissett at eight, Andy Dalton at nine, Tara Taylor at number 10. And for Taylor Heineke, they said Washington got the total Heineke experience in 2022. Energetic, exciting, and mercurial. He's best suited for a run heavy or short area attack, but his moxie, mobility, and willingness to try big throws make him one of the more enticing emergency starters. And I mean, I agree. I'm glad that we have decided that we do need a franchise quarterback and Taylor Heineke is not that guy, but I love having him as a backup. Also, NFL Network's Adam Shine ranked the eight NFL divisions by quarterback. And of course, NFC East came up last with Dak Prescott, Daniel Jones, Jalen Hurts, and Carson Wentz. Even though Carson Wentz balls out, if Jalen Hurts is as good as some people think, I'm not big on Jalen Hurts, but we'll see. And if Dak Prescott can finally actually play well in big moments and games that matter the most, then maybe we won't be dead last. I don't think we'll be top four as far as divisions go, but out of eight teams to be eighth, it's pretty bad, but I, you can't argue against it yet. We got to go out there and prove it. And I think Carson Wentz is a big part of that. I mean, say Jalen Hurts, Daniel Jones, and Dak Prescott play exactly how they played last year, just exactly the same. And if Carson Wentz goes out there and balls out like we hope he can, then we will definitely not be eighth just from that alone because I think they're underrating Carson Wentz quite a bit. I mean, they literally said Wentz had a forgettable season with the Colts. There's little reason to believe Wentz is capable of recapturing his old 2017 magic with the Commanders after Indianapolis coach Frank Wright, who helped Wentz look like an MVP candidate in Philadelphia, couldn't make it happen last year. So yeah, they're severely underrating Carson Wentz. I think if Carson Wentz goes out there and balls out, this Adam guy from the NFL Network would actually be very surprised. Also, Cody Benjamin ranked his top 10 NFL wide receivers. And just to let you know, Terry McLaurin is not one of them. He had AJ Brown 10, Keenan Allen 9, Debo Samuel 8, Mike Evans 7, Tyreek Hill number 6, Stephon Diggs 5, Cooper Cup 4, Jamar Chase 3, Justin Jefferson 2, and Devontae Adams number 1. Again, no Terry in the top 10. But hey, man, with Carson Wentz as his quarterback and Jahan Dotson as distract defenses and just his overall offense being explosive and very balanced, which I feel like it will be, I think Terry McLaurin can go out there and show that he deserves to be a top 10 receiver. Hopefully we pay him like it soon before training camp. And on another list, Pete Prisco of CBS released his top 100 players for the 2022 NFL season. For some reason, he doesn't have Terry McLaurin on there. He has him as an honorable mention which is pretty crazy but he does have Jonathan Allen at 61 and Chase Young at 67 and again that's the only two players we have out of our entire team I think that's going to change I think Terry McLaurin should easily be in the top 100 and I think we're going to get a few more guys in there as well by the end of this season I think that list is going to look very different by this time next offseason. Also, cap space wise, Brad Spielberger of Pro Football Focus did a three year cap analysis breakdown for all 32 NFL teams. And he has five criteria to determine his rankings for cap health. He has rookie contract players, projected effective cap space 2022 through 24, total prorated money, include money that will void, top 51 veteran valuation, and 2023 free agent projections. And with that criteria, 
him ranking all 32 NFL teams in cap health. Number one is the Cincinnati Bengals and the Commanders rank number two. He said, quote, Washington's annual offseason of distractions is well underway and wide receiver Terry McLaurin and interior defender Deron Payne's contract holdouts are at the top of the list. Most importantly, this means McLaurin hasn't been able to develop chemistry with new quarterback Carson Wentz as he awaits a well-deserved extension. All of that said, Washington fares very well, fares very well in our rankings, perhaps surprisingly well. The commanders have invested a lot of money in draft capital at premium positions, edge defender, wide receiver, offensive tackle, quarterback, etc. And they still have a a lot of resources available as the commanders gave out the fewest total guarantees of any team in the NFL in free agency this offseason at just over 22 million. The off-ball linebacker position group remains a somewhat glaring weakness outside of 2021 first-round pick Jamin Davis, who's expected to greatly improve on his rookie season, but there really aren't many of the holes to point out on this roster if Wentz plays well. So that's good to hear, though. I mean, because, again, this is not projecting who's going to be the best teams in 2022. This is looking at who's the best set up to truly become one of the greatest teams in the NFL, and they're saying we're number two based on cap space and who we have on our roster currently and all of that type of stuff. Also, Dallas Robinson of Pro Football Network ranked all 32 NFL team front offices for 2022 and is basing it on like team management, like the general managers, head coaches, all that. Anybody that's making decisions, player wise, roster wise, all of that type of stuff. The best decision makers. We came in at 23 and they pointed out that our general manager was Martin Mayhew. They said, quote, in 2020, Ron Rivera took the commanders to a 7-9 record in his first season as head coach. Yet the club has now stalled. Washington still hasn't found a long-term option under center and the team got taken to the cleaners in the Carson Wentz trade. If the commanders don't take a step forward in 2022, they could be a team that gets entirely blown up next offseason. So again, ranking the top NFL front offices. They have us ranked 23rd, but technically that's only out of 27 teams because they have a completely separate list for first year GMs. They have the Pittsburgh Steelers, Giants, Vikings, Raiders, and Bears. So they don't necessarily have them on the list, even though they do have them ranked 28 through 32, but that's just because they're unknowns as of right now. But out of the 27 eligible candidates to be truly ranked, we're fifth from the bottom. And just to let y'all know, dead last are the Carolina Panthers. Right above them, the Jaguars. Right above them, the Falcons. Right above them, the Cardinals. And then there's us. Also, an update on Anthony Barr. A recent report from John Com detailed that Washington is interested in signing veteran linebacker Anthony Barr. So I've heard rumors. I've heard rumors that we were interested, but this is coming from John Com. So there's actual serious, concrete evidence that we are interested in Anthony Barr. But they're waiting till sometime in August if they're going to sign him and if he's still available by then. So basically, all I hear is they want to see what the young guys can do. Khalid Hudson, Jamin Davis, and I guess David Mayo, and then of course all of the undrafted free agents that we brought in. We brought in several talented linebackers as undrafted free agents. So I think they want to get a good look at those guys in training camp and maybe even some preseason games. And then if they still feel like there's a weakness at linebacker, then they will go get Anthony Barr. Now, hopefully they can evaluate that as soon as possible so that Anthony Barr doesn't get signed by another NFL team and then we end up wanting them and now we're just sitting there with that hole but I do understand making sure that the young guys can't do it you don't want to bring in a veteran like that when you can just have a younger guy developing that can be just as good if not better I, I'm not exactly sure if we have a guy like that on the roster but you at least got to see so they're going to wait till training camp I'm pretty sure they're going to do that thing like I said earlier with Trey Apke where they're going to have a lot of the depth linebackers even some of the undrafted free agents are going to throw them out there with the first team defense against the first team offense to see what they can do and if they're not ready if we can't find a the guy then Anthony Barr is on the list of guys that we're interested in if he's still available at that point when we want to make that decision and then lastly before we get up out of here just a couple of updates that aren't too fun but this is the Rico report so I got to report everything first of all as many of y'all already know the Washington Commanders owner Daniel Snyder will be subpoenaed or at least they will attempt to because today it's been reported that Snyder has so far refused to accept service of the committee subpoena while the committee has been and remains willing to consider reasonable accommodations requested by witnesses, we will not tolerate attempts to evade service of a duly authorized subpoena or seek special treatment not afforded to other witnesses who testified in this matter. They also went in to talk about all kinds of other stuff. But yeah, Daniel Snyder is like, nah, I'm not going. I don't care if y'all issue a subpoena. He's in France, I believe, currently. So we'll see how that goes because I believe it's something you got to issue like in person physically. But hey, it's also been reported that the two sides have spoken today about the delivery of the subpoena to Daniel Snyder. Also, Snyder 
Snyder, of course, again, out of the country last week, and he's still abroad. But his attorney, Karen Patton Seymour, is also out of the country. And it's unrelated to Daniel Snyder. I mean, we'll see if it actually is, but apparently that's what it reportedly is. It's something unrelated to Daniel Snyder. So hope maybe they're not just avoiding the subpoena and just doing whatever they can to not be in America right now. But as of right now, Daniel Snyder and his lawyer are not in the country. So you technically cannot issue a subpoena on them right now. But we'll see how that goes. Also, former Washington quarterback Alex Smith shared on IG that his youngest child and only daughter, Sloane, underwent an emergency surgery to remove a large and rare malignant brain tumor. So I hope everything is fine. I hope everything works out for there. Just wanted to update y'all on that. And then lastly, the commander signed second round defensive tackle for Darian Mathis and fourth round safety Percy Butler January 21st. And that wraps up the entire 2022 rookie class. So Washington's entire rookie class is officially signed. So we're good. We don't have to worry about anybody. Because I remember like one of the Bosa brothers was holding out all the way like through training camp or up to training camp as a rookie. But we don't have to deal with that. Everybody is signed. Again, the entire rookie class is officially signed with Fidarian Mathis and Percy Butler being the last ones to sign. And then, yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And as always, I appreciate all the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Man, I really appreciate y'all catch y'all later i'm out